Welcome back to Team Talk, ESPN Radio 101.7 The Team. Joe O'Neill in today with Sam Hauser on loan from Crown Jewels and Coins. And now joining us on the Daniels Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Cool Take Hotline is Chris Gabriel with 940 ESPN in Fresno. We want to get his thoughts on the final Mountain West game for both Fresno State and New Mexico and uh, Gabriel uh, good, thanks for joining us I'm looking you know here at the Fresno uh, season layout here and you know between the first game of the season against Hawaii uh, and now really you guys have played uh, they've played some pretty good football with the Bulldogs huh? Hey Joe good to talk to you and uh, Sam always enjoy getting on with uh, ESPN Albuquerque you know the funny thing about this season is that None of us really knew what to expect. You had a new quarterback coming in. Uh, when uh, Jeff Tedford was here, he was very excited about Jake Hayner transferring in from Washington. He's a, he's a California kid. Uh, Kalen DeBoer coming back. He was a prolific offensive coordinator for Jeff, uh, in particular in those two, those two years before he went off to Indiana. But nobody really knew what to expect. And we saw the Hawaii game. They lose 34-19. And it was a team, uh, it was a team that, that we didn't really understand. And then you start to put the pieces together and you realize that they were one of the last teams in FBS to have their players get back to campus. Jake Hayner's timing was off. The offensive line was off. Defensively, they looked disorganized. But then three straight games against Colorado State, UNLV, UNLV and Utah State, none of them particularly great teams, but, you know, this team did what they were supposed to do. They pounded all three of them. Jay Kaner was terrific. Ronnie Rivers was terrific. You started to see the reemergence of uh, a former four-star prospect in Jalen Cropper. And then, with some good momentum, Joe, San Jose State. It was a huge game. That's a big rivalry game. You know, that's the UNM-New Mexico State game. That game gets canceled. San Diego State, that game gets canceled. They go to Nevada last week. They lose 37-26 in a game that the Bulldogs had 599 yards of offense. Jake Hayner threw for 485 yards. It was a game that was uh, nothing but big plays. Nevada made more of them. And so this brings us to, of course, a New Mexico home game at Sam Boyd Stadium in Las Vegas. Yeah, and uh, like you said, the game against Nevada in Nevada, they're down 30-26 to and uh, got Nevada backed up uh, near their own goal line, and Nevada comes up with an 85-yard touchdown uh, to make the final score uh, 37 to 26 uh, but you know you mentioned Hayner having 485 yards passing that's been the kind of the Achilles heel for the Lobos this season is is big plays and you know he threw the ball 65 times against Nevada do you expect him to be chucking it you know another 45 or 50 times tomorrow night I, I do and I you know I'm glad you brought up uh, what happened in that Nevada game because it, it's interesting the way that played out. That 85-yard touchdown pass to Horton. Horton was a kid who was not recruited by Fresno State, and it's suffice it to say, uh, it, he had a. It looked like he had a chip on his shoulder. He had a monster game. But Joe, the series before that, Fresno State had fourth and goal from the four. They went for it. They couldn't get in, and then it was about a minute 45 later that they had that 85-yard play, and that pretty much sealed the deal. But to, back to your original question, I do expect them uh, to throw the ball a lot. Uh, it's, it's the final regular season game of the year. Hayner has found his rhythm. Zane Pope, who was a tremendous receiver for the Dogs last year, he's back. He was back last week, five catches for 96 yards. Again, you have, you have guys like uh, Jalen Cropper on the outside. Ronnie Rivers is a machine at running back, but he is day-to-day -day right now. and That's all we've gotten from Fresno State. He is really the biggest weapon on this team. He went for a 66-yard touchdown run that got called back because of an illegal block from Hayner, and he went out injured on that play, and that's the last that we've seen of him. So he's day-to-day, -day, and I think because he's going to be out, Joe, I think uh, expect to see a lot, a lot of what we saw the Bulldogs do last week, and that's go to the air. Christopher Gabriel with us on the Daniels Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Cool Take Hotline. Again, he's on ESPN 940 Fresno. And, you know, you talk about uh, Jake Hayner just looking at it, 65 passes last week. And, and just kind of along that. So, I mean, you say that he's getting into a groove. Like, with, 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 with 65 passes in a game, I mean, is that just 
an attempt to try to get him going? Was that about Nevada? I mean, like how how do how did we get to that point? And I mean, is there anything to really read into it just beyond that game, Chris? You know, Sam, it's a great question, and we asked Kalen DeBoer on Monday at on his Monday press conference about that. And he said, look, when you take away the penalties, uh, you know, we don't set out to have, uh, have Jake throw 65 times. That's just kind of the way it worked out. Uh, it was, you know, basically two-thirds to one-third passing to running. But the fact is, Nevada really didn't show a lot that they could stay with Fresno State uh, on the outside, across the middle, pretty much anywhere. And so, you know, the old phrase, take what the defense gives you, that's what they gave them, and that's what they went with. I will say this. If Ronnie Rivers wouldn't have gone out with the injury, I don't know, Sam. I don't know that they would have won the game, but I think you would have seen less attempts because Ronnie Rivers, I mean, he, he, we're talking about a guy that's going to probably be a fourth or fifth round draft choice. He can do everything. He can run around you, run over you, run through you. He can catch it out of the backfield uh, on a little screen. Uh, he can catch, it, uh, catch a deep ball. And when he went out, that was a dynamic part of the offense that went away. And I think that is in large part, why you saw so many pass attempts, because we haven't seen that many attempts from Hayner in any other game this year. I want to get your thoughts on how accurate this is, because you know you have a, a better sense of, of what actually is going on with Fresno State, but it's interesting to watch from afar and follow along with your updates o- over the course of these games. This season, to me, just watching Fresno State from afar, it's, it's kind of felt similar to a team that's not too far from you guys, in, or, or at least you know was at one point, you know, still not too far now in, in the Las Vegas Raiders, just in you know inconsistent at times, up and down. If nothing else, from afar, it's it's been some exciting football for better or worse. I mean, overall, how have you perceived this season for Fresno State? But you know, that's a very interesting parallel. And if you uh, allow me for a second, I'll, I'll give you a broader answer. Uh, you know, you go back to 2017, and in many ways, both the Bulldogs and the Raiders have sort of paralleled themselves, to your point. Uh, back in 2017, they're coming off a 1-11 and year in 2016, so here comes Jeff Tedford, and they go 10-4. and They play in the Mountain West Championship up in Boise. The game never should have been in Boise because Fresno State had beaten them handily here the week before, but they lose. They go on and they win a bowl game. They beat, Hawaii. They beat uh, Houston. They go 10-4. and The following year, a little better. They go 12-2. and They win the Mountain West up on Boise's field, and then their last trip to Sam Boyd Stadium, ironically enough, was the Arizona State game in the Las Vegas Bowl, in which they won 31-20. Last year was a year that we, we knew that it was a new quarterback. Marcus McMarion had moved on, and it was Jorge Reyna, and they go 4-8. and eight. And It was a year that, to be fair, they probably could have been about 7-5, and five, but you know, you are what your record says you are, Sam and Joe. The fact is, uh, they had some ill-timed interceptions. They had some terrible defensive collapses, and that was what we saw last year. So you went from good to great to poor, and then this year they went. They the thirty-four nineteen Hawaii loss uh, again. To your point, a little bit inconsistent, a little bit like it was last year, and then boom, they start to catch fire, and then the games get canceled, and they lose to Nevada. So it's been a little bit of that. Uh, certainly, uh, this is a team that I think uh, has shown that they've certainly got talent. They have a, a tremendous amount of, of weapons offensively. Defensively, they've been a, a little inconsistent. Uh, they've been they've sometimes victimized themselves. They've give, you know, especially uh, on the uh, in the secondary, where I have seen uh, we've all seen too many times wide receivers even tight ends getting behind the defense, in particular wide receivers getting behind the, you know, the deep line of the secondary and burning Fresno State, and that's hurt them. So they haven't really put it all together yet. Will they do that against New Mexico tomorrow? I don't know. Uh, I, expect, I expect them to do, to do a lot offensively. The question is, you know, will they be able to, you know, to stop New Mexico on a consistent basis? All right, we're talking to Christopher uh, Gabriel. He's with ESPN 940 in Fresno. Okay, so you remembered, uh, you mentioned at the front end how, you know, Fresno got a little bit of a late start, you know, compared to some teams in the league. There's no team that has had the difficulties, as you know, uh, like New Mexico has, uh, yep. Christopher. Uh, and I'm wondering, you know, is this a game uh, that you know, the, that Fresno might have overlooked the Lobos, but because the Lobos were able to get that win against Wyoming, it got their attention. Obviously, you're aware that uh, the Lobos are starting a 
former walk-on that was winning the state championship here uh, in Rio Rancho, New Mexico last year. He's getting the start with not much experience behind him at all. So what do you think uh, the outlook is for the team? Uh, do you think that there is a chance they might overlook New Mexico or did that Wyoming uh, win get their attention? Well, again, it's a, another really good question. And uh, I will tell you that, that your point is well taken about the fact that the Lobos have been, what, living out of a hotel. Uh, they moved their home games to Sam Boyd Stadium. I, when you talk to the, the football folks here from Kale and DeBoer right on down, right on down uh, there isn't a person you're going to find in this program that doesn't really feel for the whole New Mexico program. I mean, look, everybody wants to beat everybody, but also we're all brothers and sisters in this this awful global pandemic and that's you know clearly you know what has moved the whole program up these are 18 to 22 year olds and i i'm sure the spirit of adventure and being in las vegas the fun of that probably ended about a week into it but to your your larger point joe i will tell you the kind of coach that kaylin DeBoer is there's absolutely no way they are overlooking new mexico uh this is a coach that uh, he is really detail-oriented. I've not been around many coaches in any sport collegiately that are as meticulous to detail as he is. And if anything, he will have this team ready to play. And I, I guarantee you, uh, he will explain to them that you know when he's looking at this New Mexico team right now at at one and five. Um, th- that's just, he's going to tell them to look at the Wyoming game and to look at some of the players that they have at individual positions, both on the offensive and defensive sides of the ball. And that if you don't come ready to play, uh, because it might be, a, it might be in not playing in, in Albuquerque, but it's now a place that, that New Mexico has, you know, at least calling home on a certain level. And if you don't come to play, you're going to lose. And uh, I think that this, this team understands that. This team understands that they can't, they can't take anybody for granted. Uh, they didn't take Nevada for granted. They just got beaten on, on big plays. Uh, Hawaii, as I told you, was a different story. But, no, they're not going to take, take New Mexico for granted. Not a chance. Christopher Gabriel with us on ESPN Radio 1017, the team. You can hear him on ESPN 940 in, in Fresno. And you know, we're kind of in that transition time now here, Chris, where – uh, uh, Lobo basketball has a game coming up this Sunday against Rice after the the regular season finale for football, and and they're behind a lot of teams. U and M is because of you know lack of practice time, and they're getting ready to to transition uh, to Texas here now to play some of these games. Fresno State, a little bit uh, kind of similar to that as far as having to to shut things down for a couple of times, you know, for two weeks on on multiple occasions. Now, w- what is the latest as far as the men's basketball program goes and, and where they're at as far as getting ready for the season? Well, let me answer that in two ways. I will tell you, and I'm not sure how uh, how Joe has played it on, on the show, how, how you have talked about this. I will tell you that at times, uh, and our audience here has heard me use the word hypocrite, I feel like a hypocrite uh, on a daily basis because on the one hand, do I want to see the games? Do I want to see Mountain West basketball? Do I want to see college basketball on the big screen as often as possible? Yes. But do I think that they should be playing right now? No, uh, I, I really don't. I mean, it's gotten to the point where we are doing a daily count of how many games are getting canceled and how many teams are shutting down their program. For, you know, Gonzaga is the, it was one of the most recent, right? They shut down for four games. You mentioned Fresno State. They had the two-week shutdown before the, te- the season started. They get one game out of the way uh, against William Jess. I'd never heard of William Jess of University. I thought it was a character, you know, in the Crucible. Uh, they, they, they win by 40. Uh, over them, and then they, they have the shutdown. So Pacific, UC Riverside, uh, Pepperdine, CSUN, Cal Poly, all of them postponed. The next available game, if they are able to play, is going to be against Fresno Pacific December 19th. This is a program that welcomed transfers from Tulsa, from UTEP, from DePaul. You had an incoming freshman class, two or three guys, and it's, it's similar to when we looked at the football team going back to the Hawaii game. We don't really know what to expect with this team because, because the basketball team last year, as you well uh, remember, uh, you know, the team last year didn't exactly set the, you know, you know, set the conference on fire. I mean, when you, you look at what they did, they were inconsistent. They were a team that start, they, went, they finished 11-19. and 19. They started just about every game slow. They would play well in the, in the latter half of the first half, the early part of the second half, and then they couldn't finish. Game after game after game, 
so many one point, two point losses, single and double overtime losses. So, you know, Sam, we don't know what they have. They're one and zero, and it's December eleventh, and we don't have a clue what this program has. We know that the you know the coaching staff is doing the best that they can, no different than what you're you know they're doing down uh, at New Mexico and everywhere else in the conference. But we just don't know what they have right now. All right. Well, thank you so much, great Gabriel. Really appreciate uh, Chris. Uh, really appreciate you joining us this afternoon, Christopher Gabriel with ESPN nine forty in Fresno, giving us a little bit of a breakdown on. Tomorrow, night, tomorrow night's football game, and I'm sure we'll do the same come basketball season. Appreciate you joining us. I really do, Christopher. My pleasure, gentlemen. Have a great weekend. All right. Talk to you then. Okay. Uh, again, thanks to Christopher Gabriel with ESPN 940 in Fresno. You're listening to Team Talk on ESPN Radio 1017, The Team.